top of the key, launches a three-pointer, and that's perfect. Look out below! Man, can he dunk! All Crimson tied right now. Beware of Alabama in the SEC. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Nate Oates Show. I'm Chris Stewart, filling in for Roger Hoover, of course, with the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Coach, wasn't the full week we had hoped for. It did start off nicely, though, with a win against South Carolina. Yeah, I thought our guys really came out, responded really well in the South Carolina game. You know, they're a hard-playing, tough group. You know, Frank Martin's teams are always that way. I thought our guys, I mean, we out-rebounded them. You look at some of the stats you look at to see if you played tougher than we did. I thought our guys really played well and JV and Davis came out, played great. You know, we I thought our defense kind of spurred our offense on, which was big because we didn't have Petty, right. you know, one of our best offensive players. And so we needed our defense to get our offense going and it did. And I was proud of the effort our guys gave that night. Let's get into the highlights and take a look at what happened for your club, JV on Davis, who you referenced earlier so big right around the basket. Yeah, I mean, got the free throw line, shot 15 free throws. I mean, he's strong, physical, made 11 out of those 15, got some man ones like he did there. I mean, he played great, got in the post. You know, I was really happy with his effort. So, you know, we need, need more of that. Shoot, knocked down his second three of the year. So, got the first one in his home state of Mississippi. <laughs> got, got the next one right there. Got him going a little bit. From Javian, we go to Kyra, and it Coach, unbelievable. I think it's his last five games he's averaged about 25 per contest, but was exceptional again in 37 minutes. Yeah, I mean, we almost have to play him close to 40 just with everything he's doing for us. He's got, I mean, his offensive game's taken off. He's spent a lot of time in the gym. He's really invested. You know, he's starting to make jumpers. I mean, when he's hitting jumpers at the clip, he is uh, shoot. What was he four? Six? He shot it really well that game, if I remember four right. Four seven from the field. Yeah, I mean, he he, he was good that game. I uh, sorry, that was Javian. He was three or four from the arc. Yeah, that's night. what I thought. He barely missed, and so right. you know, when he's shooting like that, it's impossible to keep him out of lane because you got to guard him outside the three point line. And then there's the one arm bandit. Yeah, Robert I mean, Jones. He's been playing great. I mean, you go back to the LSU game with the 17 rebounds, and he's. You know, this was one where he, he got, offensively, he got a lot more involved. You know, he was able to score a few more and get himself, you know, he typically hasn't been nearly as involved offensively, but he okay, almost had a double-double this uh, this game. I think he had nine rebounds and scored 10 points. He's one rebound away from a double-double with playing with one hand, with his offhand at right. that. Well, the roster says he's a freshman, but not when you watch him. Jaden Shackelford, pretty special. Yeah, I mean, with as many minutes as he's played, Shoot, I don't count him as a freshman anymore. So we hold him to a little bit different standard than I think you'd hold a freshman to at this point. But his I mean, his confidence level on offense is at an all-time high. He can't really shake it. I mean, he comes into games ready to go. So he gave us great, I mean, you look at the numbers he's putting up too. I mean, he rebounded it well too, 18 and seven. And Frank, Frank's got I, look, a lot of respect for Frank Martin. His team's always play hard. Going back to when I was a high school coach, you watch him at K-State and in there, I just, a lot of respect, one of the guys I really like in the business, and you know, he had kind of words to say after the game too. Good guy, he's done so well everywhere he's been. You look at the numbers, you got not just a couple of guys in double figures, but two north of 20, that's big, and they're, they're not just scoring, they're giving you other things as well. Yeah, I mean, you looked at that game, we had three bigs go 10, 10, and nine on the glass, so between, I think, JV and Herb and Alex, they had 29 rebounds, which which we needed out rebound South Carolina. So that, that was big for us. You know, we need to continue that and you know hopefully get it on a more consistent basis, to be honest with you. Great win for the Tide over South Carolina. Let's look at some more of the highlights. Bama against the Gamecocks. Out to Shaq on the near wing. Shaq will drive in, puts it up with a left hand, he got it to go. Shoots the jumper short, caught underneath by Davis, puts it up, counted, and he's fouled. It's in the corner, Beetle, three, steal, Kyra, one man to beat, lays it up and in. Seven point game, crowd on its feet as the tie paddles back. Nice slow down low to Reese, lays it up and in. Great hustle. Shaq, spot up three, five. Kyra the drive to the bucket, got it to go off the glass. Kyra, three, five. 
Kyra driving all the way to the rack. Reverse layup, oh. absolutely gorgeous. And it's a one point game. Shaq for the tie, bottom, let's start over. To Shaq, crosses over, goes down the lane, tough runner, rolls around, goes through. Back out to Reese, all alone, three, bottom, and Bama goes back on top. Six, at five, at four, 15 footer, no good. Tip, good by her with his one good hand. The bloodbath is over. Alabama beat South Carolina 90 to 86. Welcome back to the Nate Oates Show. Coach, one of the, I know, frustrating things is trying to build consistency this year and just haven't been able to do that. And this week was an example of that. You get the effort against South Carolina to pull off the win, and then against a Vanderbilt team that has struggled, you weren't able to find that for your squad. Yeah, I, I think I told our group going into the Vanderbilt game, we'd see you know, how much we've grown, how mature we are, and it showed quite a bit, to be honest with you. So got a lot of work to do, a lot of growth yet to be made. Still a lot of basketball yet to be played, hopefully, in the year. We've got plenty of basketball we can play. we, we got to get guys to get better. And this is personally, too. I mean, I talk to them all the time. you got your own personal resume going here. Like, we you guys need to bring an effort every game that demands a win, like when you go in with teams like this. So I thought a few guys played hard, played well. Some guys did it at times. But overall, as a group, no, a little disappointed, especially after the South Carolina one. We played so hard and so tough and gritty, and we just – and Vanderbilt was a tough matchup. You know, I don't want to defend our guys' effort, really, but they played a lot of five out. We're playing with, you know, essentially four centers, three for sure defensively with Reese, Javian, and Galen. And so when they spread us out, it made it really hard. And then Saban Lee went for the night of his life, and so did DeSue. And we, our effort wasn't good enough. I mean, they shot over 50% from three. You got to make guys miss. You can't just call that luck. You got to make people miss from three. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, and it starts with the senior night festivities. Your only senior coach, Beetle Bolden, he's a one-year guy who's really meant a lot to the program. Yeah, I really, I'm really proud of the way Beetle's come on at the end of his senior year after all the adversity he's gone through with the injuries, the surgery he had to have in the offseason, and he's playing his best basketball at the end of his senior year, which is what you'd like for a senior to be doing. I mean, he came out, we tried to get him some shots early, he hit him kind of got us going shoot if it wasn't for him we'd have been in some real serious trouble there in the first half so I think he maybe wore out a little bit in the second half I think he's done that a little bit just with how how much he hasn't been able to practice and play I think he got a little bit tired but shoot he came out of the gate great he would finish with 20 I think in the first half before he wrapped up a, uh, a big night for Alabama with 24 but then there's also Kyra Lewis who coached just we talked about it in the South Carolina highlights, but so fluid, so special to see what he's doing right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, shooting it well, you know, pretty decent from three, keeping him honest, 8-8 eight, eight at the free throw line, getting to the rim when he wants, got 30, eight assists to go with one turnover. I mean, his assisted turnovers have really come a long way since the beginning of the year, if you go back and look at November, December. So proud of Kyra's play here in the last month or so. Shaq had a rough first half, but boy, the second was totally different. Yeah, I really challenged him at halftime. He's got to bring it for us. We can't afford for him to be playing bad at this point. And he had 18 points in the first eight minutes. He had all 18 of his points within right. an eight-minute stretch. First eight minutes of the second half, he scores 18. Now, he needs him to score a few more in the first 20 in the last 12, but shoot, eight, that's pretty explosive uh, eight-minute stretch there to get 18 in an eight-minute stretch. So we, we shows you how explosive he can be and what his offensive capabilities are. Showed a lot of toughness as well during that stretch in half number two. Take a look at some of the numbers uh, a little bit later, but you know, 30 for Kyra, uh, 24 for Beetle. Shaq goes for 18. You can win with that if you get the normal averages from everybody else. Yeah, you can't have everybody else combined for seven. I mean, right. it's you know, 30, 24, 18, and then three, three, and one. Right. Yeah, we need a little bit more than seven points from the other five guys in the rotation, which is why we're missing Petty, obviously. I don't, Petty can't play 30 minutes. I mean, Petty could play 30 minutes in his sleep and put up more than three. I mean, he's going to fire up a couple threes or going in the way he's shooting it. So we can't wait to get him back. Hopefully it comes Saturday against Missouri. 
If not, positive he'll be playing in the SEC tournament when we're going to really need him the most. So hopefully we can get this thing rolling again. I think we had it going when we were healthy there. All right, so I hear you play this game called Rapid Fire on the show. Yeah, Roger's done it. I don't know what they got. Aaron's always pulling up some crazy stuff, though. Yeah. So, are, are you? Do you know what they've pulled up? Have you? Got I do, preview? and I'm not oh. allowed to tell you. I got uh, you. But we will when we come back here on the NATO show. Chris Stewart back with you, along with the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, Rapid Fire. It's what your team does. It's also the name of the show that we play here. So uh, you ready? Ready. You stretched and ready? Yeah, All right. Ready Who are your coaching mentors? A great question. I've had a lot of people ask me that. So I, I, I was a, a head coach for such a long time in high school. Right. And before that, I was a Division three assistant. The game's changed so much. So I, I'm going to go with guys I've not necessarily worked under. I mean, Bobby Hurley obviously would be one. I worked under him. That's the one I've been the two years I was an assistant. But there's a couple guys, Greg McDermott's been great to me. I've gone up to a bunch of Tom Izzo practices. I love the way Izzo coaches and how intense he is. Those would be two guys that I'd probably say have kind of mentored me along in this deal a little bit. That's not, that's not bad. Uh, what player that you have coached would make the best football player? Oh shoot, great question. I, uh, shoot, her might be a great wide receiver at 6'8", to be honest with or you. Or DB either way. Yeah, oh yeah, through lockdown, <laughs> safety, corner, DM. But there's a kid, Dante Carruthers, back at Buffalo that would have been an absolute beast. He's, he was trying to hit everybody all the time on a, on a basketball floor <laughs> anyway, so he would have been pretty good. Uh, is pineapple an acceptable topping on pizza? Oh, love it. Ham and pineapple is one of my favorite pizzas ever. <laughs> uh, what music do you like? I got a broad spectrum of music. I, I go from some gospel, some old like Detroit yeah. Motown gospel. Right. Oh, like, yeah. I like Motown. I my wife's got me into a little country. She's a Colorado well, girl. Welcome to the South. Yeah, I like, I like some country, some, some good stuff. And then I, you know, got to go with a little bit of hip hop uh, with the with the players I recruit a little bit. You got to speak their language, but you spoke mine with Motown. All right, what would a uh, or excuse me, who would win a race? Between Kyra Lewis and Henry Ruggs III? <laughs> That's a great question. I, mean, I, I, got, I got to go with my guy Kyra, but, but I just saw Henry, what, a 427? Yeah. That's ridiculous. It's insane. Now, I had I had the team run a race, and I said, you know, the winner doesn't have to run after that. We kept knocking people out. I mean, Kyra smoked everybody, so right. I'd like to see that race. His vapor trail was second. In yeah, the, it was pretty, yeah. yeah. What's tougher, a Buffalo winter or an Alabama summer? Oh, shoot. This is Buffalo winners are a lot tougher. Yeah. And to be honest with you, D Detroit and Wisconsin winners are tougher than Buffalo gets a bad rap with all the snow. It's colder though in Detroit and Wisconsin. All right. I can deal with the summer here. Just go get on the lake. Just go jump in the water. Then there is that. Uh, who wins a three-point mm -hmm. contest between you and Luke Aikens, former teammate of yours? Oh, he would smoke me in that. I, I got to get he, he's, he's one of the best shooters I know. He could have played Division One basketball at some level. He could shoot. I, I was more of a tough guy, the, the defensive guy. You know, Luke was the pretty boy, make all make all the threes. And you did all the hard hat stuff. And Baker, my assistant, was the assist guy. You know, I, got you. I get the rebound, give it to Baker. He gives it to Luke. He hits the three. They get the praise, and you get the board. Yeah, that, that's it. The hard hat. That's yeah, why we got the blue collar deal here. That's exactly right. Good stuff on rapid fire. We're gonna go from that to a break. Stay with us. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Welcome back to the Nate Oates Show. Coach, there have been some real highlights when you do, uh, you run your offense the way you do. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for highlights and certainly were this year. Yeah, it's true. We uh, guys get up and down. If we just stayed healthy, I think there's been a whole lot more. I mean, right. some of our highlight real guys, Herb Jones hasn't been able to play enough this year. I mean, even Beatles been hurt, Petty even. So I'm sure there's plenty there, though, but would have liked to have seen a few more, to be honest with you. Let's take a look at what we've got. Plays of the year so far uh, for the three. second half. Yeah, In his home day. state of Mississippi. Exactly right. Guys yeah. don't hesitate, do they? You know, he's got the three fingers up, big smile. Looks like he's, he's still happy about it after the game. As he should have been. That was a big win, though, at Ole Miss. That was huge. That was a really good victory, 25 points. And then here oh, we go one with One of my uh, favorites. Beetle. Beetle almost turns it over, dives on the floor, saves it. Pass and one. It's, it's 
plays where you dive on the floor and save possessions and get loose balls, those, those belong in my, I always, after every game, I've got a blue collar highlight reel for our guys. That's definitely one of the best. Petty getting out, that's what I was talking about. I mean, he's, he's an athlete, run the floor, it was nice. That was amazing. You were down 16-0 at the first media timeout, and you come back and you tie it. We're almost tied at halftime. Yeah, I mean, what was a two-point game at halftime? Sent the thing to overtime, so I thought our guys played really hard with a lot of effort. Georgia Ky game special, Kyra 37 leading the way in OT. Yeah, you had the block he had there. You know, we're showing some points and triple-double shooting. He's mixed in some pretty good defense with his offense that game. He's getting a lot better. This is just my favorite play Absolutely. of the year. Usually a free throw is not going to go on a highlight film, but when you know the backdrop to that story, lefty without his left hand, shooting righty, we needed those two-point game in the last minute and a half of the game, too. So not, that was I, huge. Not picking on him, but his free throw percentage is better with one-handed, right-handed than it was lefty. Yeah, is it still it? after the one-for-four performance against Vandy? But I know it was going Maybe. into that. We need to get back on him again. He's yeah. got to go four-for-four for, four for us. Go, go ride him about that. Let's take a look at what's, uh, what's happening on social media. More fun after a W, of course, but you there with uh, maybe a future Tide guard. Yeah, looks like he's got the uh, rec specs going already. So <laughs> <laughs> looks like he's a big fan. He's got the double zero going. That's it's cool. It's amazing. Only takes a minute. To, and then there's JQ <laughs> running <laughs> steps yeah. after a game, getting ready for his next opportunity and Shaq shooting that, free that, throws. That's great. I saw that tweet earlier. You know, little did they know I think JQ was late for something. That's why. I, but but let's leave it at the fact that he was just out there getting himself in better shape. I like that. I like passing spin on that a lot better than what really happened. That's why I always spun it on his Sha playing days. Shaq was three for seven at the line, so I love the fact he was in the gym. At, oh, look at our boy about Fluff. Fluff. That was an air ball. He needs a little work. Come on. The Luke. guy went Luke, 9 we got, of Luke. 10 Luke. in passing post that. Luke, we got to catch some iron, that man. That is vintage. Definitely won't bring vintage. him off the bench to shoot technical free throws, I can tell you that. No, but you got him dressed This right. was awesome. So his jacket got worn out, wore it at every game. Brian and Petway are great dudes. Uh, it's great their assistance. So Brian Petway and then Mike Adams, this is kind of a suit guy that does a lot of suits, kind of teamed up. and all pitched in and got him a brand new sport coat and they presented it to him before the game. That was awesome. From the Whip Sanderson slash Nate Oates collection. The, the, <laughs> the plaid the palace. Plaid. It looked good. Yeah. It looked good indeed. We're coming back and we'll wrap things up here on the Nate Oates Show. Even on bad weather days, the University of Alabama, gorgeous place to be. A little wet today, but it's been a little while, hasn't it? It has. It has. But no snow or ice. <laughs> That's true. Better I mean, better than what you're used to dealing with know, 12 man. months ago. I, yeah, the snow ain't the worst. This rain every single day. Does it rain sure. every day all winter long? Is that every year here or what? No. Okay. A little, little different. That was a beautiful picture, though. Was, nice, it's nice and green. You don't have green like that in uh, Buffalo or Detroit or Wisconsin in, in the beginning of March. Right. It will, uh, it's going to look good here all the time. We know that. Let's uh, let's talk about what's coming up. You got Missouri this week to wrap up the regular season, and then the SEC tournament next week. Yeah, I mean, huge road game. Our guys have answered the bell on some big road games previously. We need to do it again. Missouri's playing well, tough team. I mean, we need a win in a bad way to get some momentum going in the SEC tournament, and then playing for a lot in the SEC tournament. To be honest with you, I mean, we need to rattle off some wins there, and we're more than capable. You know, I think Petty will be back healthy. Hopefully, he's pretty close to 100%. And when we showed, even with her being at whatever percent he's at, right. when we had a healthy Petty and her playing like it was, we were playing really good basketball. And you look at our old miss game, maybe the best game of the year on the road. So let's try to get that going again at Missouri, and then let's get the best seed we possibly can get with this one game left, go in the SEC tournament and see what kind of damage we can do up there in Nashville. Always fun to work with you. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Chris. Great having you on. For Coach Nate Oates, I'm Chris Stewart. We'll see you next time, everybody. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.